Welcome to Dentology, the Business of Dentistry podcast. In this podcast, we delve into the non-clinical aspects of dentistry with inspirational guests from across the profession. You will hear incredible life stories, pick up valuable business tips and be entertained. I'm Andy Acton and I'm joined by my co-host, Chris Drevens. There's something quite special about having a previous guest back on, isn't there? It's nice. It's nice. I can't believe actually it's over two and a half uh, well, it's over two years, nearly two and a half. Yeah, two November twenty one. Stunning, really. November twenty one. And what a what a change for him in terms of <laughs> his yeah, outlook, what's his happened, approach and, and what he's done. And yeah, you know, we talk about his MBA, but that's kind of only the half of it, isn't mm. it? It's more of an attitude to lifelong learning, but the importance of non clinical learning. It's that well. mind shift. Yeah. That mind shift to say that actually all it all does fit together. Mm. It's just whether people perceive it fits yeah. together. And also I think Brad's uh you know, he's a he's a living example of it working too. Mm. He's got a dental practice um that has great management systems so you can step away from it. Mm-hmm. Um, when he's there, he enjoys his clinical work. He's mm. developing individually. So, yeah, I thought it was an absolutely fabulous episode. Mm. Well, if he, he hadn't, enjoy he wouldn't have been able to do his MBA. No, not at all. Not at all. No, it's a good, good one. conversation. Da, 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 da. Here it's we go again. another dentology. It is, it is. And it's funny because, because dentology, we say it's the business of dentistry podcast. And I don't think that this gets any more true to that term, the conversation we're about to have. No, no, definitely. And they are intertwined. And so important. As they should be, as they should be. So um, very fortunate today. Uh, we have Dr. Brad Thornton joining us. And Brad is principal of Ivory Dental Practice in Leeds, serial entrepreneur and investor. Serial um, entrepreneur. That and also one, isn't it? previous guest um, all the way back in November 2021 That's when it. he joined us for episode 15. So welcome back, Brad. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah I've, I've, st- I've still not gone over the fact that it took 14 other episodes to get me on. But, you know. No, <laughs> we're, we're good. I'm joking. In, in, in a situation that comes out like that, what we say is we practice on the first 14 to get good yeah. and then we saved ourselves for you. I knew. I, I thought that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you were busy. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. your, your episode when we did that back in November 21, we, we titled it Entrepreneurship. And I think that's still yeah. fitting because of all the things you do and the things you continue to do. Two years. But, yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. How, would you, done really quick. Yeah. how would you define yourself entrepreneurship? Um, I think, you know, entrepreneurship to, to me tends to be more of a mindset. And mm. I guess it's a certain number of traits that you might have that, um, and, and it was actually um, weirdly considering the apprentice is on at the moment. Mm. I think, you know, um, the one thing that I ever remember Alan Sugar saying, I'm not, a, I don't watch the apprentice often, but he said one thing once when somebody ex- uh, described themselves as an entrepreneur and he said, look, you don't call yourself it. Other people do. Mm. And I think it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a way in which you true, live, yeah. live life, sort of mm. do, you know, uh, the way in which your sort of creative aspect of your brain and, brain and maybe a desire for uh, challenge and difficulty shines through mm. into business. Mm. Uh, and, and for me, you know, I've always had a certain restlessness um, mm. in, in a positive way. I think there's moments where that potentially could be negative, when you know your life's balance falls out of whack with yeah. where your priorities lie, maybe um, it's hard to know that during it. It's often retrospectively look back mm. and go, "Hang on a minute, maybe I need to rebalance." But yeah, mm. I think I think it's a mindset. It's a, it's a desire to, to to challenge yourself to do things, to push boundaries, um, and, and in business, you know, hopefully that goes well. Um, mm. But that's mm. kind of where I see it. No, I think it's a good answer. Mm. Good answer. Uh, I, I'd agree. I'd agree. I think you. Yeah, I think you're right. I think. Mindset gets talked about a lot, um, and I think a lot of people kind of just push it to one side, being all this namby pamby thing. It, it seriously, it does change your outlook, and it also goes into the people around you as well. Hmm. If you're yeah. positive, and I don't mean just stupidly positive with no basis, <laughs> but if you genuinely have a plan and you're delivering that plan, and you're plain, explaining to you why it's good to be part of this process, where are we going, and what we're we doing. I think it is. It's infectious. People love it. Hmm. Yeah, and, and I think because because entrepreneurship's thrown around a lot. Um, I think people want to be an entrepreneur well, and then they, they, they sort of track backwards to try and figure out how they can become one mm. yeah. rather than maybe starting at the beginning, setting themselves up with, you know, figuring out what it is that they want, setting visions, mm. creating actual, you know, some sort of trajectory and priorities mm. and 
from there building an idea from mm. what is truly meaningful mm. to them. Um, I think and, sometimes and, and, entrepreneurs, they're sort of perceived as people who just like bet it all on black. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That It's almost like there's no logic and thought to be able to develop I think good as an entrepreneur. entrepreneurs are really they're, they're not risk averse but they do manage the downside a, a good yeah. entrepreneur will, and I, I think there's also this kind of um uh, thought process that a, an entrepreneur just has loads of businesses and just bounces between them but the reality is if you look at people who are incredibly successful you can normally chart back to one business that served them incredibly well that gave them the opportunity and the platform to then mm. go on and do other things People yeah. don't just bounce around between businesses in the early days. They really double down on one and make sure that it really delivers for them. Yeah, um, Andy, it might have been you that I heard once say something similar to that that really resonated with me because when I was earlier in my career, I, I did sort of, you know, it was hard to control this entrepreneurial thing. And mm. I did try too many side hustles at once and then actually focused on the, the, the main hustle and you, you do see it now you know with, with social media we have access to people's lives a lot yeah. more than we used to and with the development of all the other groups and all the things that are going on especially in dentistry we have a, a generation of dentists that are, that are very side hustle focused and mm. you know and I, and I get it and I think it's important for people to um, you know scratch that itch but but yeah get that first one right mm. focus mm. on that Mm. Um, you know, do what's necessary to create a good sort of main hustle mm. and then, yeah. build, then build from that. Yeah. We've mm. talked a lot Definitely. about business already, but obviously your your primary qualification is, is as a dentist. So how do you balance the mix of making sure you stay at the forefront of clinical dentistry, which is, you know, your, your core profession and what you deliver for your patients, but also learning broader business skills? What's kind of your your approach to that in terms of how you divide out your sort of CPD almost? Yeah, I think um, I've fluctuated from one thing to another. The first masters I did was in plantology. Mm. Um, and then I've recently completed the masters of business, like an MBA, master of business. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and I think one of the hardest things was, you know, wanting to really push myself from a business perspective and, and push the business and grow, mm. and 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 also add on other businesses, but also keep that clinical side going. I think mm. one of the the main things that really sort of helped for me was the segmentation of my time and making sure that mm. when I'm doing clinical dentistry. Mm. I am focusing on on the patient and I'm developing that side. But actually, mm. I am allocating time to the business of dentistry. You're in the present. And, yeah. And, and, you know, when we're trying to make decisions and, you know, analyze parts of the business and, and, and go into the sort of some of the depths of it that will enable the right decision going forward, like actually spending time doing that and trying not to mm. be pulled away from it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I do think, you know, it sort of intention is important. And if you are wanting to improve the business of, you know, if your business and within dentistry, we're in this, it's relatively unique, you know, an associate dentist can be a business and mm. can, can act very businesslike, you know, business owners um, who have owned their own practice for obvious reasons, you know, business people that are running up to buying a business, getting, you know, there's all these different mm. sort of almost yeah. demographics of, of dentists. And, and you know, dental care professionals. We've got mm. other people, non mm. you know, non dentist yeah, yeah, practices, yeah. Um, and being really intentional of of knowing when you need to focus on the business and what areas you need to develop, and how it and being works. Quite self aware. And how it's it a works, very, yeah. I, I think a simple analogy is like we all know how to drive a car, but a lot of us don't actually know how it all works. And it's that I think you know, there's so many mm. business owners, not just dental practice owners, who they. They drive their business because they sort of turn up, but they don't actually understand how it all works. And I think it's really, really important. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I think one of the things with dentistry, typically, and I know it's not typical now because times have changed, but you know, it's a relatively stable business model, mm. uh, cash flowing. Um, you know, only a dentist can do what a dentist does, kind of thing. And I think yeah. you know, we, we, we sort of the, the industry as a whole has probably gone through quite a, an extended run of. You know, business is doing well. It's super just robust, by, isn't it? That's it, just by being a dentist. Mm. Um, and, and as soon as challenge comes, as soon as things happen that make that business model start to crumble a little bit, mm. people are mm. turning to an, a solution 
then it's like, well, if, well, if, I, if I don't know what my solution is, mm. because I, cause I've not been working that muscle very much, mm. what, do I, what do I do? But, but also I think stress is like a body's response to pressure. So if we mm. have to do something new or something that makes us feel uncomfortable, we get stressed because that's mm. how our body will respond to that. So it always surprises me that given the choice, dentists and, and business owners and, and, and some associates as well who kind of run their own businesses would always favour a clinical course mm. over a business course. But a lack of business competence must surely make owning and running a dental practice more stressful yeah. because it's an area you feel uncomfortable Definitely, about. And because stress is our body's response to pressure, it, it would make sense to me that perhaps a dentist to focus as much on their their business skills and developing those as opposed to purely, purely clinical. No, yeah, and, and I'd agree with that. You know, as, as somebody that I now do a couple of clinical days and per week and, and the, the rest is, you know, business-related mm. mm. activities um, and, you know, business decisions that you make and business problems that you solve uh, can be longer lasting and impact the level of micromanagement you're doing, the number of times mm. that you're, like you said, getting stressed day to day mm. um, because your business is running every day that it's open, whether you're there or not. Mm. And, and and things that are happening, if if you've, you know, struggled to create, you know, the systems or the business that, that manages effectively, then you're far more likely to get bothered, hassled, stressed, mm. all of that mm. than you than, than you are um, from the patients that you're treating. So the, the business mm. side of it makes it way less mm. stressful. Was, was there a point where there was like a dawning realisation that you had to start investing in your person and your on your business development away from being a mm. dentist? Yeah, was it kind of almost like an epiphany where it's like yeah, you woke up and you're like, a light bulb if, moment, if yeah. I want a future that doesn't revolve me leaning over the back of a dental chair. I, I have to do things differently. Yeah, I think there was, you know, there was the first, I don't know. I mean, the reason I bought, one of the reasons I bought a practice was that I was doing, you know, five day a week, mm. massive NHS contract, 30 minute lunches. Yeah. Um, you know, even though I'd had it in my mind that I wanted to buy a practice and it was always something I was going to do. I, I jumped, potentially jumped early mm. because I was disillusioned by how hard I was working. And I was looking at a list of patients and seeing UDA rates rather than, you know, anything else. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, moving into private practice and, and working again, you know, six day weeks and, and, and really working very, very hard clinically to enable the business to grow because at the time I wasn't really making any business decisions. It was just, you know, mm. treadmill and running. Mm. Um, Surviving. Yeah. And, and things evolve over time. And, you know, you're going to learn from your own mistakes. You can learn from others, which is better. And then you've got, you know, the academic side, which, you know, people people may question the benefit of academic, but often it'll come from, uh, you know, a multitude of other people's trials and errors to create what mm -hmm. could be seen as, as an ideal situation. But um, I was making a lot of mistakes learning from them. And then the, I think the big, the big thing for me was the whole, I'm getting to an age, we're going to be settling down, we're going to be raising family, need to figure that, you know, just... Just starting to actually focus on how my future was going to look, mm, mm. Um, and you know, realizing that you know the last thing I would want to do. I mean, I've got a four and a five year old, and yeah. um, so this was what six, seven years ago. In the run up to that, um, it, it, you know, it was like, how, how am I going to carry on doing this and also raise a family? And I think it was that point, even though I'd always been interested and almost been an amateur business enthusiast mm. in terms of learning. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been interested in personal development, but I think at that point I took more, I had more of an active interest. You know, signed up to certain masterminds. You know, the, the kind of entrepreneurs you see on Facebook. I was mm -hmm. going to mastermind sessions. I was paying to be parts of groups of entrepreneurs and people that were business owners and trying to learn as much as I could. Um, so I'd say it was the the acknowledgement of of future. It was starting to look forwards mm -hmm. and thinking. You know, at what point does this type of working run out of road mm. and I just mm. end up, you know, the, the guy I bought my practice off retired early because of ill health. His, his, right. his, his business partner, his associate, sorry, did the same. Mm. So many stories of dentists just burning out mm. that mm. I was like, right, I, I don't want to be a 50 odd, 60 odd year old dentist mm. with, you know, a, a, a crippled over neck, dodgy yeah. shoulder, bad knee, bad hip, mm. you know, um, 
I need and to. You, you want to be clear. present for your children as well, don't you? Yeah, to be exactly. able to, you know, be part of their future. Exactly. I don't know if you know them at the time. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel very lucky. My kids probably say they see me too much. <laughs> you know, <it's>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know you, their memories of their dad is like, you can't get rid of him. <laughs> you clearly, Which is a better memory. So you clearly memory. got the bug for it after kind of acknowledging that that was going to be your kind of passport to. Um, enjoying running business and also enjoying your dentistry because there wasn't so much pressure on you to deliver clinically. You then went on to do an MBA, a Master's of Business Administration at University College London, gaining a distinction. Oh, very well, very well done indeed, very well done indeed. Yeah. Um, an MBA is quite a broad church of learning. So how specifically did this further education support you as a dental business owner? I think, you know, with the MBA, Every single sort of module that's there is, like you said, very general business focused. But when you're doing about, you know, certain things to do with operations, leadership, um, you know, marketing, economics, accountancy, all that kind of stuff, um, it's very sort of applicable into dental practice. There are certain things which you need to uh, learn as part of the MBA that, would be way more general business but every single session that we had every lecture that i listened to and watched and, and seminars that we had in live sessions i was going back to work that next day and and you can see how that can then influence the business mm. that i was running you know especially some of the right. yeah. you know you, you, you mentioned mindset earlier you know all some of the stuff to do with leadership and and, and actually running an organization and sort of empowering staff and, and getting them as part of your team. Um, and then, you know, breaking down business into, I mean, Chris, you, you mentioned driving, you know, breaking a business down into its component parts and almost looking at it from an engineering eye, eye and seeing how all these mm. different mm. parts fit together and just create a smoother running operation. Um, you know, the MBA really kind of broke down my thought processes and the way I look at my business and helped mm. me focus on the certain, I guess, jigsaw puzzles that could be slightly tweaked to just create a better picture and a better business. Mm. It's yeah. so, it's so, it's, we, we did a course uh, re recently, Brad, and it's so, it's so interesting. Blueprint, one blueprint of the things for success. that we just said to the, uh, that's yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah blueprint for um, Yeah, I've loved it. Look, it was, the really fact good. of most of people, yeah, it was good. It was good. But most of the people in the room, we, we were saying to them, and, and you sort of said it right at the beginning, is that because dentistry is pretty comfortable and it's really hard to cock it up, that nobody sort of really, or, or should I say the vast majority, don't do anything like what you've done. You know, actually, I'm going to analyse. Could I make it better? Could I make it less stressful? Could I make mm. it more successful financially or whatever? And and we sort of said to people, so how many of you know what your profit is? And, the, you know, there was like a your blankness around the room. And, and we were talking about there was a, a bunch of guys that, that we know that they've got a decent number of practices, but no one produces monthly management information. And we said, yeah. how can you run a business <laughs> without knowing what's going on but it's partly because there's that comfort factor um so it's so, it's so important mm. this education to actually understand it how you can influence it mm. and also make you less stressed as you said right at the beginning it makes you less stressed mm. yeah on that because it's, it's interesting if yeah, you speak sure. to um if you speak to an accountant and i'm talking nasdal accountant um the last couple of times i've spoke to them regarding monthly management accounts uh, the answer is oh we don't typically do that for dentists so it's, a, it's an industry-wide thing, you know, it's, it's almost, yeah. mm. um, you know, it's a definite, you know, stuff like that and understanding how the, how the business is going month by month because, you know, it's all very well getting to the end of the year and looking back going, oh, okay, you know, good or, oh, shit, mm. or, you know, but, but unless mm. you can it's see what's and happening. Gone. It's been and gone, that year's yeah. gone, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I suppose that it goes back to what you were saying, Brad, in a way, the, uh, and we've noticed it with valuations, is, is really up until probably COVID, um, not a great deal ever really changed in dental practice. They mm -hmm. sort of like moseyed along, looking okay. You know, if they, if they set up a new one, got a bigger contract, put new chairs or something. But in the vast main, if nothing really major had changed, yeah. they sort of all look very similar year on year, really. And then COVID has been a complete revelation. Yeah. And I think it's so important, even more important now, that people understand what's going on and are educated mm. with, with what they need to understand about running their business. Yeah. 
Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. But Brad, I'm conscious that an MBA, an MBA won't be for everybody, but equally developing non-clinical skills is crucial patient communication, managing finance, leadership, you know, management, all, all those aspects. So what would your advice be for people who are thinking about buying a dental practice mm. or even owners, how they can develop in this area if they don't want to make that that, that big step? MBA and, and light. Do an MBA, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, you know, one thing that, you know, I, I do actually feel that some people just, well, most people that I, I speak to tend to struggle with this. It's actually... First of all, actually trying to figure out what it is that they're uh, wanting sort of from their business in terms of um, what do they, how do they want their mm. business to serve them? Where where are their priorities? What does mm. you know their life look like in five years on its current trajectory? And you know can um, can they sustain what they're doing for that and and, and be happy? Mm. And I, I chat to dentists you know relatively frequently and. I've got to say every single person that I speak to um, sometimes struggles to answer that. Um, and then from there, I think... Is that because they don't they, think about it, Brad? It's because it's they don't think about it. They, they, they come to me with you know yeah. issues where um, the, the diaries are drying up. They don't know how to do marketing. Um, mm. They're thinking about adding another couple of surgeries. They know how much it's going to cost, but they don't know whether they'll be able to service the debt to, to be able to do it. Mm. And then... You know, I'll ask certain questions like, well, um, and, 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 you know, I've got an associate who wants to do more days, but I, and, and these various questions. And then I'll typically ask certain questions about, like you said, about sort of profit and, you know, do they know mm. the marketing that they're doing at the moment? You know, what is it that they're doing and how effective is it? Can, can they um, say what level of treatment comes from the marketing that they carry out do they do they know where the profits come in and certain mm. questions that they just don't seem to know because it, in order to offer advice you often need mm. to know what the answer to those questions are um, yeah mm. so you know there's definitely mm. a, a, a certain level of becoming self-aware then becoming you know business aware and then being able mm. to identify where these improvements and and development comes from um, I think dentistry is probably mm. ripe for business education. There's a lot of, you know, a little bit of sort of mm. disjointedness. And, and I think sometimes the, the, the stuff that's out there tends to focus a lot on the sexy stuff, which is understandable. Um, but yeah. I, I do think mm. that, you know, focusing on the, the, the real core evergreen skills that are going to enable business success long term mm. Mm. you know is, is going to be valuable but yeah i think mm. business awareness self-awareness and just basically accepting that you want to develop and being open mm. to that i don't know whether that's a very good answer guys mm. <laughs> but, no, you know, I think, no, no i think it is i think and i think what you said about those core skills you know they never go out of fashion you know the yeah. principles of running our, our different businesses, your different businesses, we need to be able to manage people. We need mm. to motivate people. We need to lead people. You know, we, we need to understand our finances. None of this is is business specific. Yep. They're just yeah. good uh, principles to, to running a business. It sort of sounds like, doesn't it, that, that the people that come to speak to you are normally got an issue of some description as yeah. opposed to uh, that actually the, the whole rump of dental practices. Mm. They could all learn. <laughs> yeah. they, if they all learn, they would be better either businessmen, as mm. in the fact that they might be more profitable, or they might understand mm. their business better. Mm. It's, it's, you know, it's, it seems to be the shame bit, isn't it? The fact of, well, I've, I've got an issue, so therefore I'll reach out, as opposed to actually saying, oh, actually, it would be a really mm. good idea if I did but, understand but, but how but my practice works. I do wonder if, if some of stuff. that comes back to mindset. You know, Chris, Chris mentioned yeah. you know, the Blueprint course that we did, mm. and there was a practice owner there, and um, everything's going really well in her life, everything's working out amazingly, yet still came to learn and develop and look for some one percenters and mm. i think the mindset yeah, of true. i can always grow i can always get better you don't wait for things to go wrong then fix it you're always on this quest of what can i learn how can i add value you know where, where's my next development opportunity coming from so i think that yeah. mindset as a start point is is critical just just, just go back to your your, your own mba mm. thing brad you've got 
a practice and, and a family and an MBA is not a not a small undertaking. H- how did you fit it all in? Because yeah, most I was people, say time. How does well, it take? Did, most people believe they're busy. Most people go, oh, I've got my, my time's full. I haven't got any capacity for anything new. So how did you fit an MBA, which is a significant undertaking, into your life? Um, yeah, um, from a I guess from a from a head space point of view, I made sure that when I was doing MBA stuff, I was focusing on it. When I was doing um, ivory dental stuff I was focusing on it I actually was writing my book I was finishing my book off when I was starting the MBA as well so when I did that I was right. doing that when I was with the family I was <laughs> with the family Brilliant. Um so it was very much you know when when I was doing one thing I was focusing on doing that one thing and and I I, I do get easily distracted so that was quite a challenge um, you know from a from a logistical mm. point of view um, I've always been an early bird as well so I, I, I allocated specific time early in the morning. I remember those days, Brad, our very early morning conversations. I know. You know what? It's like, you know, get yourself into the right kind of headspace for the day and feel productive. (coughs) You know, I'm a massive advocate of that. I'm not suggesting the 5 a.m. club for everybody, but there's a definite benefit to me for for feeling a certain way for for my day. Um, Andy, I just want to touch on what you just said about that that lady, um, that, that dentist who you mentioned. And mm. uh, again, I've, I have said this before, but, you know, everything that we experience now is an echo of what's happened in the past. And the, the, the positive mm. echo that rebounds is often a lot more delayed than the negative one. So if, you know, if I stopped, mm. you know, doing mm. anything in my mm. business today, yeah, I if, I, if, if, I, if I stopped marketing, if I stopped, you know, um, helping the, the staff, if, if I stopped, whatever, if I stop now, then the negative consequence would tend mm. to come reasonably quickly. Um, but the mm. positive echo tends to take a little bit longer. So, you know, if you're going to be mm. developing yourself and, and if you're going to be trying to impact things, but it, often, you know, it takes a bit longer and it takes a bit more time and we need to be patient, but we need to work on it. And it, it, it's something which, um, you know, if we're looking at, at life through a longer lens than just, you know, tomorrow and next week, um, you know, we need just need to bear that in mind. So I think that that, that um, mm-hmm. dentist at your course who was doing something when she's actually already doing reasonably well uh, has got the right kind of yeah. idea. Because, um, mm. yeah, anyway. Mm. Well, it's getting that information accessible yeah, to people, isn't it? Yeah. So that they're interested in. Yes. If you had to distill down perhaps just two or three skills that entrepreneurs, business owners really needed to, to double down on and get good at, what would you narrow it down to? Um, I definitely think it's try and uh, minimise distraction and this whole um, single tasking where try and focus on what you're doing at, rather than trying to multitask everything all in one go at the same time and be distracted in the you know, mm-hmm. little 10% of, of everything, you know, get 100% mm-hmm. of something. Um, I think that's mm-hmm. a big one. Yeah. I think, you know, a creative brain takes you away from, to ideas so i think the the single tasking is a big one um and i actually also think as well is the this idea of network and you know one of the big benefits to me was actually establishing a really strong professional network um you know of of which Mm. you know you're part of that andy actually (laughs) you know this this mm. this group of people who it's 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 it's, 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 it's funny you say that Brad. Uh, i think this this network thing has come up two or three times you know we obviously talk to mm. lots of different people and, and there is a theme that a lot of people who are successful say i really value my network i consciously develop my network i lean into my network they use me so i think a power of a, of a good network is is a really important it's part. a bit like counseling no no you know, it's no surprises and no um, mm. risk, you know, in the fact of people don't yeah. call you a twat, or they yeah. do, but in a nice yeah. way, if you know yeah. what I mean. I think Andy has called me a twat before, but, you know. <laughs> but, it's, um, but he did it in a nice way. I'm sure he did, did it in a nice, it, 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 a, a it, constructive it came, it came way. with love, Brad. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It was, <laughs> done, with, it was <laughs> done from the heart. Yeah, and, and I think I think that, um, it, you know, it's very industry-specific. It's a certain type of problem and... In a, in, a, in a way in which people that come together with, you know, common profession, for me, in, a, for, in terms of profession, you know, we've got a sort of a professional connections mm. in terms of, 
certain issues that we might, you know, you've got unique knowledge and people within sort of my network, um, I think all of them have got far greater knowledge of certain areas than I do. And, and, and I think that that is massively helpful to me um, to be able to call on mm. people and ask questions and, and hopefully it's reciprocated. Um, so yeah, the, the, the network mm. and, and actually my, my network, even though they were, it was relatively passive, it came because of shared interests. Um, and, and I, th- and I think, right. yeah, leaning on your network, definitely. Cool. Cool. Brad, it's been, it's been great. It's, it's, it's a lovely conversation. I always enjoy the time that we spend, spend together. Um, even as a returning guest, it, 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 we, we could gloss over these two questions, but no. you're not going to get away. I want to see what because every episode, we've always asked our guests the same two questions. So we can't let you go without answering them yourself. Can you remember Again, what the last ones were? I can't. I should have had I a can't. listen to make sure you're yeah, going to double It's going to be cringy so, if it's the same. So the first one is your... Quick, your, producer, have a look. <laughs> see what the two questions were. <laughs> <laughs> so the first Send us a one message. is you're, you're a fly on a wall. Fly on a wall in a certain situation. Who's there? What's going on? What's happening? Um, you know what? I think now I'd, I'd probably say I'd be quite interested to be a fly on the wall in the home of Elon Musk chatting. To, he's got a son, hasn't he? Um, I want to be a fly yes. on the wall and listen to Elon Musk having a chat with his little boy. I'd, I'd just be really interested to know how somebody like him re- reacts, like just how he acts at home with it, with his with his little boy. Mm. Does little... he communicate like a normal father son yeah. relationship, yeah. or yeah. is he a little bit peculiar? Yeah, I'd just yeah. be really interested. You only ever see the, He's got the brain the size of, of a planet. Yeah, so that's a yes, bit of a weird answer, but that's kind of what I think that'd right be cool. now. No, that'd be no, cool. No, that'd be cool. I think and, a lot of people would be interested in that. Yeah. Actually, they? And if you can meet somebody, you can sit down um, in a nice comfy chair and a glass or something and have a chat. Who would that be? Um, you know, this this might have been the the answer I did last time, but actually, for me, it'd be it would be some some world leader. You know, someone like you know your Barack Obama or. You Tony Blair. I'm not saying that you you don't have to be a massive fan of anybody, but just to sit down and have no. a conversation over a drink and just just pick their brains and just get get their un, unedited views and opinions on stuff. Mm. And that'd be interesting. Yeah, big jobs, big big jobs and big decisions. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, massively mm. massively I think scrutinized. Only certain pe- I think only certain people can carry that. Yeah, I think carrying there the was, responsibility of those those that, decisions at that level. What's that yeah. film? There's a film with Jeremy Irons. It's about the crash of 2008 or something, and he basically makes the decision. It's based on true fact, and he basically is the CEO. And they bought they they're like he's the big baller that they bring in for these massive meetings, and basically he just says we're going to sell it all, and they're all saying, but it does not and he says. That's why you pay me the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Sell it all, he said. And basically, you have to be first. Mm. And and they, they were the first guys who started selling everything. Right. So as they lost money but didn't go down. But it right. was like that. Yeah. Those those people who make those decisions, yeah, the, the, sell the, it all. The buck has to stop somewhere, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, it's all or nothing, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And yeah. making the decision, you know. Absolutely. Don't prevaricate. Brad, we'll let you go. I know you've got a very, very busy week ahead of you. Um, yes. So we'll let you go and get your, your bits and pieces together. Always good to spend time with you. Thank you very much indeed. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah, no, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks good, again. Good Cheers, yourself. Brad. Cheers. Thank you for listening to this episode of Dentology, where we discuss the business of dentistry. If you like what you heard, please do subscribe where you found this episode. That would be amazing. And also follow us on Instagram.